bevo.com. And it is quite clear that in the hospitality industry, brand is a huge asset, just simply because, you know, if I'm in Shenzhen and I'm not familiar with Shenzhen and I see the Crown Plaza, there's a bit of reassurance that everything's going to be OK. Um, but what's your philosophy on building a world class brand? Well, you know, we operate seven brands at the moment with Holiday Inn and Intercontinental and Crown Plaza. We are trying to build the strength of those brands around the world such that they are resonant and have great profile within each domestic market. But equally, as, as foreign visitors are traveling overseas and around the different ones, there's no disappointment because obviously a proportion of people who stay in our hotels are from another country. Now, one of the myths of hotels is that everybody flies everywhere. They don't. Ninety percent of people who visit hotels drive there and they are from the country involved, or wherever the hotel is. So it's actually very important that your brands deliver first and foremost in the country in which they're located. That's the first job. So therefore, we are not ironclad in, make, in saying that every aspect of, it, of our brands has to be the same. I think that's, that's sort of an old colonial thinking that's not relevant. The positioning of the brands should be the same. The way they fit against their competitor set should be the same. And the ultimate delivery to the customer and the guest must feel the same. But how you actually deliver that will vary from being in Shenzhen to being in Birmingham. Mm. And you have to be adaptable enough to be able to deliver that, uh, that, that, that experience in the particular way uh, in, in the domestic market. But then there have to be enough points of similarity in the icon, in the iconography and the design and the appeal and whatever you're presenting as, as, as the brand equity. That has to be at its heart constant too because otherwise people would get off the plane and say, well, what's this? I'm, I'm in this brand, I thought it was this and it was the other. So it's just, and that's where the judgment comes in. You know, you want to be localized enough to be resonant with the, with the locals, but you want to have a theme which is international and, and clearly uh, is consistent across the world. But getting that balance right is part of, the, part of the, uh, the task of brand management, and that's why it's quite an art. Your, your guests have over 160 million stays in your hotel rooms each year. So from the brand perspective, how do you make sure that they all receive the same sort of level of customer service and customer experience? What we're trying to, well, there's a number of ways we physically do it, but then the, the first job is to understand what it is you are trying to create with your brand and then protect it. In, in the past, some hotels have had books of standards which have run to 500 pages such that everything was uh, delineated and was sort of uh, mandated. And uh, what that can do is it can get in the way of the clarity about what it is that your brand really stands for and protect those few things that make that up. So we've been working very hard to actually try to simplify uh, and, and get really clear on what is at, at the heart uh, and soul of each of our brands. And then we apply a series of uh, you know, uh, mandatory and voluntary um, enforcements and audit procedures and protocols normal to any brand that, branded company that licenses its brand out to, other, to third parties. So we have physical audits, we have mystery shoppers, we have electronic guest surveys that take place. We have a number of ways in which we make sure that the standards that we're setting are being uh, adhered to. Customer feedback is within the DNA of the hospitality industry. I mean, it has to be because so that you can constantly improve your services to your customer. But how does IHG make sure you differentiate and go even further than other hotel groups in that really critical area? Well, you're looking for, I mean, we, we, as I say, we, do it, we, we have a lot of techniques. We do it through interviewing and qualitative and quantitative group setting. We, we talk to customers who stayed with us after their stay and, and, and do that on a, on a random basis as well as a focus basis. And we do, as you, look, as you will have known, if you've stayed in hotels, which you clearly have, there's the old questionnaire in the room. And we've all filled them in from time to time. And each hotel that carries our flag has a minimum number of questionnaires that it has to reply, it has to send in every month so that we know, and it has to be against a certain range of demographics of, of the guest um, usership base of the hotel. So we get a pretty accurate picture over time of how each hotel is performing. And as I say, the key to it is to know what, what angle or what element of the brand we're trying to press. So Intercontinental brand is a good example. We have spent two years really trying to get to the heart of what makes the DNA of the Intercontinental brand different from all the other luxury brands in the world. And in a nutshell, we know now that the concierge and his or her ability to really access the local market and find points of real difference that guests can enjoy when they're in the hotel. Now, all concierge do that to a degree. We want to make sure that when you're staying in an intercontinental hotel, the whole experience of how you engage with the concierge is different. And is it a level 
fundamentally different from any other five-star hotel that you'll stay in. And it's all about how we think the Intercontinental Hotel is positioned as a what we call an in-the-know hotel. It's, it's one where you actually use the hotel as a springboard to enjoy the local market rather than just staying in the hotel and closing the doors behind you. So once you know that, then you can go and test and ask questions and audit for those particular features of your brand that you're looking to, to highlight. So we spend a lot of time figuring out how we do that. Yeah, because when I've been speaking to concierge and staying in hotels not in your group, um, I'm sure I've been sent into gangland at least a few, you know, once or twice. So I think you're right, it's a very important area. When Virgin hire people, they say they've got a type of person. Does IHG have a sort of a type of person? And does that differ across your branded segments? Well, we're, we're different from Virgin because we're a multi-brand company. And what we, what we are uh, engaged in, in, in making sure that each one of our brands has a unique footprint because what we're trying to do obviously is to appeal to different types of users and, and customers so that we're not just substituting the whole time and cannibalizing business from each other. And the more precise and differentiated you can be about, about your guests, the better chance you are of avoiding uh, duplicating and substituting business all time. So we work very hard when we talk about the profile of each brand, whether it's Holiday Inn or Intercontinental. They are quite different beasts and the people who would fit into those uh, hotels and bring the brands to life in those hotels are going to be quite different and we've just opened our new brand Indigo which is again a very different lifestyle type of proposition and the sorts of people we're talking then about coming into an Indigo might have a slightly different way of uh, their behaviours and attributes are slightly different from there on a Holiday Inn. So we're actually getting quite clever now at trying to um, discriminate between who's going to be a really good Holiday Inn member of, and team member and who's going to be more uh, suitable and suited to the intercontinental way because they are all different and, and that's our job and then above that we have an IHG set of corporate values which we call the winning ways which we do like everyone to sort of uh, uh, get on board with and that is really based on a belief in collaboration and on uh, sharing and helping each other succeed and that should be something that the company can look to do across all its brands but within each brand you will find different flavors and different types of people uh, operate and that's right because we're offering seven different brand experiences Bevo 